Let's get into the NFL headlines here. We'll start things off with Carlos Hyde. He is going to become a member of the Cleveland Browns. It's a three-year deal worth more than $15 million with $6 million in year one. I think this is a solid move for Cleveland. Obviously, Isaiah Crowell is moving on to the New York Jets. Wasn't a lot of indications that Isaiah was going to return to the Jets, so not so surprising that he is moving on. Meanwhile, for Hyde, I think he's a solid running back. He's got good burst, solid pass catching ability as well. I think he has three down back potential in Cleveland. But it all comes down to the draft for me with the Browns. Are the Browns anticipating on losing out on Saquon Barkley at number four overall? Because they have number one overall, right? And they have number four. And maybe this signing indicates they're a little wary about Saquon perhaps falling to number four. I can't believe we're actually using the word falling. But yeah, Saquon is potentially a number one overall pick, number two, number three. The signing of Carlos Hyde, though, tells me that the Browns are going to go quarterback number one overall. That cements that theory. I had in a recent mock draft that the Browns are going to get Saquon Barkley because I was all googly eyes over his performance at the NFL Combine. But now with Carlos Hyde coming to town and Duke Johnson already there in the backfield, I don't think it makes much sense to get Saquon at number one. So the Browns are kind of drafting... Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, whatever it is, and then crossing their fingers and then hoping that Saquon Barkley falls to them at number four. But I don't know if he slips past the Colts or the Giants. Something to keep an eye on. But Carlos Hyde, a new running back in town for the Cleveland Browns, a team that is clearly trying to change things up with John Dorsey, now the general manager. This guy is not holding anything back. He's going all out in free agency. So Carlos Hyde headed to Cleveland. Teddy Bridgewater will be going to the New York Jets. It's a one-year deal with the Jets. Exact money has yet to be released. But the Jets are also bringing back Josh McCown on a one-year $10 million deal. So we have a couple of quarterback duels coming at you this offseason and don't rule out the Jets drafting a quarterback in the draft as well picking number six overall I think gang green may not be done with selecting some new quarterbacks and bringing in some new faces here the Jets as I mentioned also signing Isaiah Crowell formerly of the Cleveland Browns but as for Teddy Bridgewater was sidelined for 14 months during his recovery placed on the pup list where he spent the first six weeks of the 2017 season was medically cleared to return to practice and from weeks 10 through 17 served as the backup to Case Keenum. You may remember his ceremonial appearance against the Cincinnati Bengals in Minnesota. I believe he threw an interception in that game, but who the heck cares? The guy came back from a brutal injury for McCown now. This is very interesting because McCown set career marks for completions, yards, and touchdown passes last year. Also a season where he fractured, fractured his left hand in week 14 against Denver. It makes me wonder now, is Josh McCown the favorite to be the starter in 2018? Is it Teddy Bridgewater? Maybe it's a rookie quarterback. Who will be starting for the Jets in 2018? Just open up your crystal ball, if you will. Try to project in week one who will be under center. I've got your options. Josh McCown. Teddy Bridgewater, perhaps a rookie quarterback. Give me a laughing face for that. Or Bryce Petty, LOL. Or give us a wow face for Bryce Petty because, well, no way Bryce Petty is going to be the starting quarterback in week one. But I put that there for a couple of giggles. Sticking with the Jets here, Tremaine Johnson going to bolster that secondary. And full contract details aren't known just yet, but Johnson will get paid $15 million annually. Are you kidding me? I mean, Tremaine Johnson is a good cornerback, but he's not $15 million worth, so it, a big-time spending there for the Jets. And they have the salary cap space to do it, so it's not surprising that they overpaid here. And I think it's an important signing, considering Morris Claiborne is a free agent. He's probably not coming back, and Buster Screen is not a key, uh, CB number one. So, uh, yeah, this was a very important signing for the Jets and kind of a supply and demand type signing. They were in high demand of a cornerback, and Tremaine Johnson ate up all the money there. So Johnson, physical cornerback, 6'1", over 200 pounds. Wasn't great last year for the Rams. Surrendered a 79.8 passer rating last season. Also ranked as the 68th best 
cornerback, according to Pro Football Focus. But you got Johnson along with safeties, Jamal Adams and Marcus May. That forms a nice, solid, young secondary there. Not quite Jaguars or Rams level, but solid out there in the AFC East. So Tremaine Johnson headed to the New York Jets. A former Jet headed to Green Bay, Muhammad Wilkerson reuniting with Mike Petton, former defensive coordinator, worked with Wilkerson out there with the New York Jets, and Petton is now the D.C. of the Green Bay Packers. So relative down year for Wilkerson in 2017. Of the 85 players with at least 300 pass rush snaps in 2017, Wilkerson ranked 69th with a pressure rate of just 5.4%. So not like the years of 2013 and 2015, when he registered 28.5 sacks. I mean, good amount of sacks there, but has registered just eight quarterback takedowns in 28 games over the past two years for Wilkerson. So maybe a change of scenery was needed. Maybe motivation was a factor, too. He might be more motivated to perform for the Green Bay Packers, a team that will be in the playoff hunt. The Tennessee Titans made a big splash last night. Deion Lewis headed to Tennessee to play for... The Tennessee Patriots, it seems. Four-year deal, $20 million worth, $3 million in incentives. GM John Robinson, I'm telling you, he loves his Patriots. Robinson himself has the Patriot connections. You got Logan Ryan in that secondary already. You got Malcolm Butler coming on over. Mike Vrabel, three-time New England Patriots Super Bowl victor, the new head coach out there. So it's all kind of turning to this Tennessee Patriots theme. Hit me up in the reaction poll. Yes, these are the Tennessee Patriots, or like they are getting there. I doubt anybody actually refuses that we're heading towards a Tennessee Patriot kind of feel here. Lewis, though, dynamic, elusive running back who will be a great compliment to Derrick Henry. I think it's a really nice signing. No player rushed for more yards in the second half of last season. So Dion has a lot of momentum in his favor. And... For Deion Lewis here, third most elusive running back in 2017, according to Pro Football Focus, will join fellow Patriot Malcolm Butler. And I want to talk a little bit more about Deion Lewis before we get to Sam Bradford for the Cardinals. I'll get to Mike Glennon later. But for Deion, he's going to compliment Derrick Henry in a really important way because we know what the Tennessee Titans like to do. Run the football, establish the line of scrimmage, play action down the field. The Titans are building a new offensive identity by cutting DeMarco Murray, ushering in Derrick Henry as that lead dog, and then signing Deion Lewis. So Deion Lewis here, I think, will be a very important piece to this puzzle for the Tennessee Titans, going through a lot of change here with some new pieces. Malcolm Butler, I talked about him, and a new role, a fresh role, for Derrick Henry. The wide receiver position is a bit of a concern for me with the Titans, but they're in a good position there. All right, so let's talk about Sam Bradford first. He's going to the Arizona Cardinals. It's a one-year, $20 million deal, also a $20 million team option. The guy hasn't played a full season since 2012, but the Cardinals, they were in a position where they lost out on the Kirk Cousins sweepstakes. They knew they had to make some sort of move in free agency because at number 15 overall in the draft, they're not going to get a Rosen, Darnold, or Josh Allen. So I think this is a very important signing. Bradford suffered a non-contact left knee injury that eventually doomed his 2017 campaign. It was to the same knee where he had torn his ACL twice, though tests that time revealed no structural damage. I still think Bradford is one of the more accurate quarterbacks in the league if he can just stay on the football field, and that is the big kicker with him. It's interesting. Bradford has made $114 million over his career, but he missed half of the 2013 season, all of the 2014 season after te tearing his ACL. So the history is there. Bradford has started 80 games with the Vikings, Rams, and Eagles. The Cardinals are in desperation mode for a starting quarterback with Carson Palmer retiring, Matt Barkley becoming a free agent, of course, as well as Drew Stanton. Neither of those guys are the answer for the Arizona Cardinals. So Sam Bradford heading on over, as well as this guy, I mentioned him, Mike Glennon. So he's going to be released once the new league year begins at 4 o'clock Eastern time. 
And then he's going to sign with the Arizona Cardinals. That is my understanding. The Bears have yet to officially cut Glennon, but Glennon's going to go to the Cardinals. Has thrown a career 34 touchdown passes to 20 interceptions in 25 NFL games, 22 starts in all. And you may recall the Bears signed Glennon to a three-year, $45 million contract in May of 2017. Only 19 of that was guaranteed, but yeah, you may recall how that all went down. Not too well. Glennon didn't really last long for the Chicago Bears. So we're looking at perhaps a Sam Bradford, Mike Glennon training camp quarterback duel in the big toaster. How about that? Very interesting stuff there. All right, the white whale of free agency, Kirk Cousins, headed to the Minnesota Vikings. He's going to be whining and dining with Vikings personnel tonight. And, of course, that will be once the new league year begins. So, hey, right at the dinner table, right next to that fantastic ribeye steak, Kirk Cousins could have his contract and he could sign it this evening to make it official that he'll be become uh, a member of the Minnesota Vikings. It's a three-year, fully guaranteed contract, according to reports, $84 million. Totally revamping the quarterback market, which is unbelievable to see. So, during his time as a Redskins starter, he has ranked fourth in passing yards, sixth in passer rating, seventh in total QBR, and eighth in total touchdown passes. So, I mean, he's got a good resume. Are the Vikings Super Bowl 53 contenders? That's what I want to hear from all of you out there. Hit me up in the comments section. Is it time to buy in to the Minnesota Vikings? I talked about how before the playoffs started, they were going to win the Super Bowl. Obviously, I looked like an idiot because they stunk up the joint against the Eagles. But Case Keenum is Case Keenum. This is Kirk Cousins, who I think is more of a gamer, more of a winner, more of a proven resume than, say, a Case Keenum. So... I think the Vikings are in a very real position to compete for a Super Bowl. Hit me up in the comments section. I know the Saints, the Rams are up there as well. Don't sleep on the 49ers either. All right, Drew Brees, there were some rickety feelings that maybe he was not going to stay in New Orleans. Everybody can breathe a sigh of relief. He is remaining with the Saints. It's a two-year deal worth $50 million. Second year is a team option. And the contract is an interesting one because apparently, according to reports, it was a take it or leave it kind of offer from the New Orleans Saints. So if Brees didn't like what was thrown on the table, there very well could have been a scenario where he was headed to the Minnesota Vikings instead. So Brees has recorded five 5,000 yard passing seasons, by far the most. In NFL history, has thrown for at least 30 touchdowns in nine of the last 10 seasons. The exception, of course, was last year, thanks to Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara getting it done at the running back position. But Drew Brees going to stay with the New Orleans Saints. There were reports out there that the Vikings were calling up Drew Brees' agent. That's why I talked about the Vikings a little bit ago. And so some teams were offering some big-time contracts for Drew. And in 2012, you may recall, Drew Brees got a little frustrated with the New Orleans Saints leadership because contract negotiations weren't going in the right direction. And I thought and I almost foresaw a scenario where Brees was going to get frustrated yet again and maybe this time around look elsewhere. But the Saints did not let Drew Brees go into the new league year. And